Hi there, friends. It's Dr. Carol. Thanks for joining me. How healthy is your spiritual life? I'm not talking about the things you do. I'm talking about the quality of resilience, the life that you are experiencing on the inside. You know, Jesus came to give us life. A scripture you may know well, John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come, Jesus said, that you may have life and have it abundantly to the full till it overflows, various translations. If you are not experiencing life, that is something Jesus wants you to have. If there's stealing, killing, and destroying going on, you can be certain that is not from God. If you are experiencing life, that is the healthy spirituality that God designs for all of us. That core inner part of who we are I'd like to talk about a contrast uh, between something that is unhealthy on one side and then healthy on the other in our spiritual life. And that is between cheap grace or rigid human perfectionism on one side and full lasting grace on the other. Now, we as humans have a wonderful tendency to fall into ditches. We get all bent out of shape on one thing and take that to an extreme, and it makes, kind of, it makes us unbalanced and unhealthy. And I think that is what sadly has happened in many religious people's lives in this area of either cheap grace or perfectionism. Grace is wonderful. Grace means Jesus is coming to you and saying, I love you. I forgive you. I invite you to come regardless. It is free. It's scandalously free, overwhelming abundance. Thank God for forgiveness. There is nothing you have done that is too big, too bad, too overwhelming that Jesus will not welcome you, invite you, love you. That is who he is. That is the message of the gospel. But that is just the beginning of the gospel. Jesus' grace is also big enough to transform you, to take you on a journey of change. Now, that cheap grace just stops right there. That cheap grace says, Jesus forgives me and accepts me, so that's all there is to it. Now, the other ditch that human beings so often fall into is, okay, if there's more, if I'm expected to change, then that means I've got to try harder. That gets into human perfectionism. Now, God's standard is high. If you've read the Bible, if you've been around church, you probably have heard that. God calls us to a very high standard. The problem comes when we as human beings make a list, a hierarchy of sins. We say, this is worse than that. And if I follow this list of do's and don'ts, then that means I'm good. And if I don't, that means I'm bad. There's sins that are worse. And we as humans love making lists of rules. Well, that happened all the way through history. In the Old Testament, the Jewish nation came up with lists of rules. The Pharisees in the New Testament were great at following the rules. But have rules ever made you good? Now, if you don't kill somebody, that will keep you out of jail, most likely. That's a good thing. But do they ever change the heart? I don't believe they ever do. And that's the, that's the limit. That's the problem when we come up with a list of hierarchy of, of sins, a list of rules and do's and don'ts. Following that human list of do's and don'ts leads to misery or greed or pride. Uh, you, People just become prickly. You probably know Christians who have been in church for decades, but you don't want to be around them. They're miserable. Nobody likes being in their presence. They're just kind of spewing out hang anger or judgmentalism or uh, sadness or, or misery of some kind on everybody around them. That's not the life of Jesus. Again, 
The antidote to that is the full grace of Jesus. So here on the unhealthy side, we have cheap grace that only looks at the beginning and says forgiveness is all, that's the whole point, and you don't have to change. Or on the other unhealthy side of the ditch is rigid human perfectionism. I'm trying harder to make myself good. Neither of those works when one or the other of those two unhealthy sides of the ditch become prominent. People can uh, become miserable. I think those are the kinds of distortions that have led many Christian leaders to fall, fall from grace, so to speak. And that's an interesting use of that term when they fall into, you know, greed or power plays or sexual sin or whatever it is, because they fall into one of those unhealthy views of spiritual life. Let's talk a little bit more about the full picture of grace, what the scandalous grace of Jesus really is. Yes, Jesus loves you unconditionally, just the way you are. But he also loves you too much to let you stay that way. Would you really want to remain the way that Jesus found you? We are all broken and miserable in some way. Wouldn't you love to experience that change? The full grace that Jesus offers not only takes you where you are and deals with your past, it also deals with your future. It is big enough. The full grace of Jesus is big enough to transform you, to change you to become the person God originally created you to be. I think that is the even better message of the gospel, if, if, there, if there can be one, that you don't have to stay the way that you are. You don't have to live like this. You can experience that amazing transformation. How do you do that? By giving the Holy Spirit permission to change you from the inside out. Isaiah says, and Hebrews in the New Testament quotes this, a new heart will I give you, God says, and my spirit I will put within you. I'll take the stony heart out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will change you from the inside out. Giving him permission to do that allows that kind of transformation so that you can experience that abundant life that Jesus came to give. That is my prayer for you. Now, this is just a snapshot of something that we are unpacking in the Fully Alive group this month, our online community where we together are seeking to experience that fully alive kind of life from Jesus in every dimension of our lives and relationships. This month, we are talking about healthy spirituality. And if you're watching this video when it first comes out, tomorrow evening, Tuesday evening at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, we are unpacking toxic spiritual viruses versus characteristics of healthy spirituality, unpacking what those four toxic spiritual viruses are, and then the three characteristics of healthy spirituality. So it's it's unpacking these ideas at a deeper level than I'm able to do right here. And I would love to have you come join me there. Go to fullyalivegroup.com, become a member, and you can be part of our Tuesday evening session, as well as all the other sessions. Every Tuesday evening, we do something together here in the Fully Alive group. As a member, you can access all the previous recorded sessions, as well as be a part of our weekly sessions going forward. You can have individual connection with me. We have downloadable resources that are free uh, for members. And I would love you to join us in our encouraging online community, the Fully Alive group, fullyalivegroup.com. And until I come to you next time, God bless you.